Good evening, everyone. Monday, 8 p.m. A very warm welcome to the Online Darts Live Lounge with me, Phil Bars, Jack Garwood, and Lee Boyce. We're going to keep you entertained for the next few hours as we look through everything that's happened in the darting world. Plenty that's gone on. Drama. We had Gob almost stranded in Amsterdam, which was funny. We got us got us busy at the weekend. We had Jar back doing some streaming with us. Boyce was on as well. I had a bit of a jolly up as well. It was all good, boys. Not quite sure about the stranded bit, mate, but yeah, the rest of it sounded all right. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you didn't even know until I sent you the text. It was like, um... <laughs> no, no, I walked out the press room as well, to be fair to them. So I just became the bearer of bad news. Uh, yeah, it was, um, it, it, it was interesting, that mad hour to try and get a flight back to the UK. Like you say, you weren't the only one in that boat and... By all accounts, chatting to a few people today, some people still haven't got luggage. Um, what a time to be alive, boys. I mean, to be fair, it probably worked right, out better it? for me. I got to fly to the airport around the corner from me instead of Birmingham, but you know. <laughs> um, chat room is on fire as always. Daniel's in nice and early. Tommy, Bob, Owen, how are we doing? Uh, Henry, Matthew, Craig is in. Sam. Uh, Liam, evening buddy. Philip is in as always. James says, well, hey, the lads are back. We are, but we are working out. Is this the last live range all three of us do together until August? And not just until August. I think it's the 8th of August until one of you drops a bomb that you're not here for that. Maybe. In fact, when's Australia? When's Australia? But, uh, yeah, I don't know yet. Um, Potentially, after the but yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Boyce, Boyce is going on holiday for, for two weeks. Uh, where are you off to, lad? Off to Tenerife, pre Blackpool, Tenerife trip, just to let me in the mood for uh, sunny Blackpool. Just any, there's only one winner, and that's Blackpool, mate. Come on, you know, just 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 tell your missus that Blackpool's better. See what she says. She might be listening, not a chance. I'll tell you afterwards. I'll tell you in that <laughs> um, So, yeah, Gob's, Gob's got a wedding. Boyce is going on holiday. Look, it's just one of those ones. But don't worry, the team will fill in. There'll always be at least one of us, probably two. Um, but, yeah, it's um, it's, it's one of those um, ones. It's all good. But, yeah, we're back tonight. Malachi's in. Alex, uh, Wim, how are we doing? Um, Barry, Carl from Darts Tracker. Hope you are good, mate. Uh, Rose, Sean, G Adventures, Max, uh, Ryan Hogarth was in. Hope you are good, mate. Um, yeah, look, it's been a it's been another busy week in the darting world. Um, look, we'll talk about most things. We haven't, maybe not have everything clipped up or a picture, but we'll try and touch on everything. Uh, we have PDC um, here and in Holland, Dutch Darts Masters and the Women's Series. Uh, so we had some UK DA stuff, um, some WDF. Um, stuff, the live league, um, the seniors coming up, it's all go. <laughs> That's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? This show is hectic. Yeah. Again. Um, it, yeah, it's all good. Uh, Laura and John are both in. And the good news is Maisie's now on school holiday, so she hasn't got a bunk off school anymore to watch us. <laughs> you won't be in trouble no more, is what you're saying. You know you've made it in life when you're somebody's excuse going to school. <laughs> I was about to say that. You know you're doing something right when people are bunking off school to watch us. I, see, love I, it. I, I get hyped over the fact that even one person sits and watches every week. I genuinely sometimes struggle to comprehend that you guys just want to sit and listen to us talk darts for, well, I say darts for two hours. Darts for about 20 minutes and crap for the other hour and 45 that we usually go on for. Yeah, us, us, us three just arguing amongst ourselves. <laughs> um, it was all good. Great to have Jar back involved at the weekend as well. Um, he'll probably be listening. Or is it, is it the cricket? Does he have some sort of cricket today? God knows. We've been probably some sort of touch rugby or you know, whatever <laughs> sport he's into now. Um, we'll, we'll have a look at the race for the match play yet. Just get Gob's predictions to see if Ryan Searle is safe yet or not. Aha, funny, yeah. <laughs> 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 what did you say, Gob? 
<laughs> uh, he was. He was signed for that February. Yep. He was not. <laughs> uh, but look, it's, it's all good. Um, oh, right, we'll, we'll go. Okay, someone else, Ryan Sell didn't make the match play. Stop giving me that crap. Yes, but they didn't win. That's not the point. That doesn't make him safe. His place was under threat. It was confirmed at the very, ah. very last time. <laughs> Um, it's all good, but yeah, thank you very long. Before we jump into it, if you haven't yet, make sure you give us a like and subscribe as well as always. We don't try and bang on about it too much, but it's nice. Numbers are slowly getting there, which is amazing. Thank you very, very much, everyone, for your continued support. Um, right, we'll try and go in some chronological wait, wait, order. Wait, wait. We're slowly getting there. We reached 25,000. I presume that's tonight. They are... The prizes are behind me, behind that sheet. Well hidden. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Not winning. Um, Hello. Just to let everyone know, just as he said it's behind him, you're not winning the washing machine. I can confirm it's not the washing machine. <laughs> just to let that right away. Yeah, it, it's a Bill's washing machine and a year's supply of Calgon. To, to be Christmas fair, tree. Like, <laughs> is, it, is it too early? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, to, to, to be fair the 50k prize I'll put the washing machine on eBay and we'll donate it all to charity what do you reckon <laughs> God, like, no 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 no, no. Um, uh, right so Again, chat room, get involved. We will chat as much as we can, but we will have question time as well. First of all, we're going to go to Amsterdam, where Gob flew solo for the first time. It was the Dutch Stars Masters, uh, the last in this block of World Series events before we head down under. And although the tournament was good, and we'll talk about it, I feel there are now more questions after this event than we had before around certain issues. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on them afterwards, but we'll, we'll, we'll do the dark side of it um, first of all. For me, and I think some of the players said it as well to you, Gob, this is, throughout the whole of them this year, this is the strongest World Series lineup we have seen. Yeah, every single player was in the top 64 ranked in the world. We've never really seen that from a World Series, but then on the other side of the question, and I suppose it's... I don't think it was on your radar to discuss, but did it really need a World Series event? Um, that is on the radar to discuss afterwards as well. Don't worry. Um, if if but... you've got eight players in the top 64 ready to compete, plus Michael Van Gogh and sat on the other side, and Raymond Van Barneveld, the five-time world champion legend that he is, not getting an invite, do you need to grow the game anymore in that country? Uh, arguably not, but someone has put up enough money for Barry to say we'll run a tournament. Let's not let's not beat around the bush. Enough money has been presented to Uncle Barry to run a tournament as a business guess, model. Also, yeah, that uh, that as a what? governing body. That's but they're not. They're, they're, I know they're, they're not a governing body. But everybody looks at them in that. Yeah, I, I know. I know what you're saying. In that mold, they are the the, the point of it of darts organizations in the world. Also, at what what point do you cut it off? So, I don't know what's next after Holland, would you say, is in the world series? Probably Americans have got the next quantity wise number in the events. How how many players do they need to have before you say, No, we're going to stop doing it there? And probably Australia's in the mix as well. World Cup champions, we still do now as a world series event. So I think I still think it's right. It's there, but one thing I know we're going to touch on the game shortly. But I thought that, and Dob, you'll be able to tell us better. I thought atmosphere-wise, I thought it was very good, especially Friday. I thought it was outstanding. The the respect for the players, there wasn't the jeering and that sort of stuff. And I I just thought it was a, 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 a very very good watching of Bills are to tell until me otherwise. The last, until the last session, which which we'll touch on. Until the last game, really. Wadey got uh, it a little thought, bit. Yeah, I was like, the, the semi-final, Wadey got it as well. 
a little, not as badly, but literally the final, every single dart. One guy was sat two tables away from me, and I just I gave him the dirtiest look so many times. Um, yeah. Uh, evening, uh, Martin Luke in the chat room. Congratulations at the weekend, buddy. Um, yeah, but look, does Holland need a World Series event? No, um, for me. But look, enough money has been put forward by Toto via play to to do, to do it basically. So it is what it is. Maybe we should host one. If you all keep clicking okay. like on the stream. We will have the online dart sponsored PDC World Series event. From Andover. In a town of your choosing, we'll have a poll. Andover. We're like, put it in Nottingham, it's in the middle of the road. That's fine. But yeah, look, the, the, the Friday, it was, it was seed again. Um, even though I was at Wembley watching Ed Sheeran, I still had my phone on. Um, watch everything that was going on. Um, couldn't help myself. Um, but God, seeds tumbled on the Friday. Yeah, and some of them you could probably have made that argument for. Um, Fallon Sherrick struggled a little bit in her World Series appearances so far this year. Um, Michael Van Gerwen was fresh back from surgery and arguably had the most difficult draw in the tournament. And Dirk Van Dijvenbloed has been in great form and Peter Wright hasn't. But the other side of that did not expect Michael Smith to start falling to Martin Kleermacher Smith in that conversation for best player in the world right now. He's just picked up title after title. Uh, Gezi against Vincent van der Voort. I thought Gezi looked somewhere back to his old best at the World Cup at times. He looked fired up. He looked like he was up for it. Um, I'm just did not mandate for Jermaine Watamena getting his first win in front of a TV camera in, in nearly two and a bit years. Agreed. And look, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on them bits of that in, in a minute as well. Um, but just a couple in the chat room. Uh, Johnny Mac wasn't there. Um, he was on a holiday. Again, this, this, this event was added to the calendar very late, wasn't it, in terms of diaries and whatever and, and Johnny Mac had already booked um his holiday because it was the only like week that he could get in so that's why he wasn't um there James Richardson is in hope you're doing ruthless and of course Jim McEwen is in forever watching uh John O'Shea Ireland for a world series event I don't dislike that I'm not gonna lie I I like the idea of a of a world series event on the Emerald Isle um, any excuse to head to Dublin um, for me. Um, but yeah, look, there are question marks around it. Look, some of the Dutch boys played um, very, very well. Some of them have won and played okay. Um, disappointed in, in some of them. I was expecting a little bit more from Jeffrey Dijuan Boise. If I'm being honest, I think he's played okay recently on the Pro Tours. And James Wade averages 90 and win 6-2, Jeffrey's missed an opportunity there. Yeah, I think I'm with Dob on the names you've mentioned. There was a couple of upsets, not upsets, but a couple of the underdogs as such who were I fancied in dirt, Danny maybe due to, um, but then there was others that Jeffrey is one was someone who had expected to push James Wade in the, where James Wade's been. Obviously, we've been missing a Premier League week and, and that. I expected more from Jeffrey as one. I think we've seen him drop dramatically from his when he had that run at the match play, what, two, three years ago? Um, and it seemed like he was getting a bit of that back. We've seen some of it in uh, some of the players' championships, but it was just very disappointing. And I thought Wade just done Wade things, didn't he? Just finished well. But there was opportunities there for Jeffrey as one. He just didn't. Something with the release as well, I didn't think was right. There was something not right in Jeffrey Dijon's, um game at all. And I was disappointed that he wasn't able to put up a fight against James Wade in what would have been three out of three at the time. Yeah. Um, again, the, 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 the elephant in the room, Michael Van Gerwen played somewhat surprisingly. Um, played OK. Look, Danny Noppet was sensational. Let, let's, let's get massive credit to him in 
first of all, Gob. Um, but I think it was more of a case of MBG testing, seeing. And I think from that point of view, yeah, look, he's a winner. He wants to win every time he plays. But the actual way he played ticked a lot of boxes heading in towards Blackpool. Yeah, I think so. I, look, I think he'll be selective about his schedule with European tour this weekend and four pro tours before the match play. I'm not sure I expect him to play in all five of those. And I also think if this World Series event was anywhere else, then he doesn't play. It, it was too soon. He'd, he'd literally practised for an hour on Wednesday, declared himself fit, and the next time he picked his darts up was Friday night. Um, yeah. This event being in Amsterdam in front of a, a Dutch crowd as, as large as it was, would have had a massive influence on Marco Van Gogh and deciding to play in this World Series event. Um, I agree. A little unfortunate with the draw, perhaps. Danny Nopper has is, is just been solid for the last 18 months plus. Obviously, the UK Open champion. Um, and for large parts of this game, the pair were up around the 102, 103 mark. It's only really the last couple of legs when, when Danny breaks and, and then reels off the win that struggled a little bit, Marco Van Gogh. And he, he matched him for an awful awfully long part of this game, which I think consider Danny had six 180s in there to Michael's one. That, that's some feat because his 140 scoring kept him in it. Yeah, agreed. Um, moving on to the quarterfinals on um, Saturday. Um, look, Dirk has beaten Clear Macca, not played well in the quarterfinals, but, but got the job done. Um, Wadey much improved from round one. Um, beat Kyvenhoven. Dimitri, 6-1 over Jermaine Watamina. And Danny Nopper, a hard-fought 6-5 victory over uh, Vincent Voicy. Four good quarterfinals. Yeah, considering the surprises that we had on Friday night, then coming into Saturday, for me, we probably had the four favourites done through, or the four we was expecting to come through in that quarterfinal, um, which then was the surprise because of how many shots we had on the, the day before. But... The better name in there was Noppert and Van der Voort. Yeah, probably averages and that don't show that, but it was quite tight throughout. Um, Wade was much improved. And uh, Dimi, yes, we know, obviously, what he went on and done, but played very well against Botamina. I think there was an opportunity there for Clear Matter to beat Dirk. A well, Dirk's playing, he didn't perform. And there was certainly an opportunity there for a, an upset in that early one, but the, the over the line, job done. Yeah, the, the, the semi-finals, full of drama, uh, Gob. First of all, we'll do the, the fairly one-sided one, first of all. Look, Dane Oppert's average 95, but Dimitri's doubling more than anything in this 7-2 win, averaging 103, was, was nothing short of world-class. Yeah, he was just solid. He just seemed to have an extra, an extra gear. And every time Danny looked to respond, Dimitri shut it down. Um... A few moments where you think Danny's going to work his way back into the game, and every single time, Dimmy's like, "Nope, no, thank you," almost apologetically in front of that crowd. But job done in, in superb fashion for Dimmy. Um, the other one was just an absolute belter of a game. Dirk coming through a last leg shootout with Wade in. It was just a very good game of of darts. Look, yes, there was some whistling and. I can't help but think that if this was in, in Germany, we'd maybe be going a little bit harder on it. But Wadey, you could see at times he was getting agitated. I think when he broke to make it six all, he gave it some back, Gob. I think so. The, the 140 from James was absolutely superb, especially in the conditions and the fashion. Dirk's out on a double. Looked like the game was getting away from him a bit. Dirk looked like the most likely to break constantly throughout the match. And at that moment, you thought maybe that had just broken the Dirk resolve. He was a little bit erratic. It, you, it felt weird. It's, it's weird to say Saturday. Uh, Friday night, Dirk looked magnificent against Peter Wright. Saturday, it was almost like holy hell, this tournament has opened up massively in front of a home crowd that I could go and, and lift the title here. Um, and I think that was on his mind a little bit too much throughout the event. Um, but yeah, look, the, the one point was massive. To keep his calm, to respond back was superb. But um, Wadey let him in that door in that final leg. I think he just, his trebles just started going missing. Um, 
and look, like you said, I don't think the crowd were the crowd were what I expected against James. I thought that it wasn't constant. There was a few moments, but it was nothing that we haven't seen elsewhere and that we give other crowd stick for the final is when it was really bad. Really, really bad. Well, yeah, on that final, look, it was a superb display from Dimitri Vandenberg. Um, Dirk had a couple of opportunities early on in the final, Boise, but didn't take them and Dimitri ran away with it from there. Yeah, it's it's one way I don't really want to take much away from Dimmy because he was just that good. Um, being in sort of the away player as such, um, the performance he put in in both the semi-final and the final to, to think he only dropped four leads against Noppert and Dirt in the form that those two players are in just showed how good Dimmy was on uh, Saturday evening and it puts him in great stead for the, the match play, which we know he's not good experience from. Did he say, what, won 13 out of 14 games there in the last two years? Yeah. So he's in great form at the match play and he's going there with back-to-back -back World Series events. So it was just sensational. Yes, Dirk could have took those chances early on and maybe would have seen a different game. But I'm not convinced we would because Dimmy was just so good. Um, yeah, no, look, he, he was. And it is back-to-back -back TV titles in brackets for for, for the Dream Maker. Um, <laughs> look, it's, it, it's to the point now. Look, no, no one knows what to call them. It, let, let's be brutally honest. Because the PDC won't categorise stuff, they just class them all as TV TV wins. No one knows what to call these anymore. Let, let, let's be frank about it. Well, no, but I thought it was interesting that Dimmy himself, when I spoke to him afterwards, said that this win wasn't as big as your regular TV. He even used the word major. And then proceeded to list off your Sky and ITV tournaments that aren't World Series. Oh, the, the players call them majors all the time. Hmm. It's just that none of us do. Or none of us know the, the paying public... There's no way of categorising the the, the the tournaments. Yeah. For it's, me, if the, the if the broadcaster's not showing the early rounds, it's not a major TV tournament. Well, this is a this is another an, another issue, and I, I I put it out there on Twitter. ITV's coverage of the World Series has been nothing short of shambolic this year so far. I don't disagree. Um, and it disagree says a lot when the PDC have put it on PDC TV for UK viewers as well. That's never happened before. Even with delayed coverage in previous years, it's never been live on PDC TV. But even that didn't go successfully. That was what? First time missed, was it? Or part of the first time missed uh, on PDC TV. I understand. We've spoken about it before. I understand what the reason for the World Series. However, a large number of darts fans are in the UK, so when these events are on and they are being claimed, and players are looking at it as a, a major event or major TV event. For me, it's still got to be available for the UK viewer to watch live. If the fan then doesn't decide to watch it, it's on at two o'clock in the morning, then that's their decision. But it still should oh, yeah, be available no, I, for this one. I, no, no, I, I, I agree. I, I, I agree. It, it, it should be, and then when it's not, you then push people to use VPNs to watch it on PDC TV and, and so on and so on. Um, but the fact that ITV have chosen not to show sessions live, especially, look, the New York one's a little bit different because of the time zone. Well, I don't agree with it, but I can understand it. But the ones in Europe, there's no excuse not to show them live. Yeah, okay. I agree. Um, 
Look, if there's a, if they've got America and Australia, I, I can sort of understand a little bit because I guess they're taking away from some of their peak audience, which they might get different ad revenue for, and whatever time you get higher paying ads during peak viewing hours and that sort of thing. That's how TV works, but yeah, there's no excuse for tournaments but, that are an hour. Old. But even the ones that are on when they're on later on, what? start and midnight years let's say they can still be put on there's no if they'd have put on the ones in the future at midnight and still have their highlight show at two o'clock dob you watch is it american football or whatever it is you watch you see you stay up to watch it because you're a fan of that sport yeah. as yeah. i'm sure you would do if the dart was on at that time as a number of people would so there's no reason why they don't multi-view what's what the ytv4 show at 12 o'clock at night you know Reruns and midsummer we murders or River Monsters. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Black Ops channels as well. I fully appreciate their sport is normally covered on one and four, and they'll make a lot of money from their late night casino on ITV one and whatever else. But there's absolutely no way two, three, and four are showing anything of importance beyond half ten, eleven. ITV two is normally reruns of Family Guy or American Dad at that point because they ran out of content. That's just absolute filler until the channel goes off. ITV3 is period dramas and crap. And look, I guess ITV3 has an audience for that. It's like you wouldn't put Glastonbury on Radio 4, for instance. But just do it. Just get it out there because there are a lot of contracts coming up very, very soon. And there's going to be a lot of competition for showing darts tournaments. And you're about to lose that, which comes with an awful lot of audience. Darts is the second most watched televised sport in the UK and I appreciate that if you guys are watching this from around the world you guys probably have very very similar issues trying to watch our championships and PDC TV and via play and, and all of that but in the UK specifically when you've got the second most watched televised sport in the country and sport is massive in the UK and you're not taking every single opportunity possible to show it to your audience live when there's demand for it, okay, maybe not the full demand that there is if it was a UK-based, UK Open or any minor tournament or whatever, but when you're not taking that opportunity, you're going to lose it. And you cannot be so adamant that the fact that PDC will want free-to-air TV in some guys will keep you in your role as UK free-to-air TV post-broadcaster. Because what they'll do is they'll just make PDC TV or something else free to use for a period of time to show a couple of tournaments. They'll just take it away from you completely, send people to them for a trial or for a free watching over a certain amount of time, and then they'll make them sign up for the rest of it and get their audience that way. You will lose out. Just just yeah. one other point before we move on from it. Us more than anyone can see that darts... In the early hours of the morning, clearly words. We've done a live lead that runs on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night that has a vast number of viewers that tune into that. And no disrespect to any of the players in that, what we're talking about here feature the best eight players in the world, tend to anyway. Mm -hmm. So there would be people who would be tuning in. Yeah, it may come to effect to us and the live lead, but it clearly shows that people are willing to watch darts at whatever hour in the day as long as he's viewing, it's worth watching. And we've proven and the thing that. Is, we've, we know what numbers we do on TV. Yeah. We know what numbers we do on YouTube. Sporty stuff went from showing three nights to showing pretty much every session. It must be doing something for them numbers-wise as well. Yeah. And they're the ones we don't see. So if we can have an audience on that, I, I don't believe there wouldn't be an audience for free-to-air live darts when it's going because you are less likely to go back and watch something you know the result of. One of the best parts of sport is you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know the outcome. You can sit and watch highlights. Match of the day does all right and, and whatever else. But there's still an element of watching live before you find out the result, before you go on social media, before it's plastered everywhere, of watching that and finding out the result in your own time. Agreed. And when it says there... Even via play broadcasted the US Darts Masters at midnight. So there you go. 
Right, off the run, back of this. Run over. <laughs> no, no, it's not a rant. It's just as fans, more than anything, it's just showing our frustration. Um, God, some of the elite, shall we say, looked absolutely knackered yeah. on Friday. Um, the ones in particular that stood out for me watching it, Michael Smith, Johnny Clayton, James Wade, Gerwin Price looked absolutely dead on their feet. Yeah, there was a, the ones that stood out more for me were Johnny and James Wade. Uh, look, I know Smith yeah. asked about time off previously. I still thought he looked similar at the hockey, not massively off. Gezi again, there was the odd reaction. Johnny Clayton looked absolutely dead on his feet. He looks like he's aged about 10 years in five weeks since the end of the Premier League campaign. Bless him. I'm not trying to be nasty, but he just looks like he needs a few weeks off. And I'd be very, very surprised if he wasn't looking at that and trying to manage a schedule ahead of the world match play. Um, and James Wade, I, I, it's difficult to compare the events because they mean different things to the player as well. But the contrast between James Wade playing for England at the World Cup of Darts and James Wade trying to G himself up and perform at the level that he needed to this weekend playing for himself was, was massive. Boise, are we at the, the, this point now where I know we all moan like hell when we didn't have all the events on during COVID and, and I get that, but do they need to be scheduled a little bit better? Um, well, the, the sort of different ways to look at it. One, is it the need to be scheduled better or does there need to be more variety in the pits? Because we've seen very, very similar players to the Premier League that we've seen in the World Series. If it was a bit of a switch up, then maybe not as much. The other part of it is we've seen Euro Tours and then we've seen a lot of these players playing exhibitions on the Friday night in the UK before a Euro Tour, but the night after a Premier League night. So it's a mixture of the PDC are probably putting too many in. However, are all these players helping themselves with what other commitments have got outside of the main calendar? Exhibitions, charity events. So there's a mixture of stuff that have happened over the past six months that players have put themselves in that have maybe also had an impact on that. So I think it's a general looking at the calendar and seeing what the best thing to do. It's going to be interesting with the Players' Championships coming up and the uh, Euro Tour to see how many players don't play all of that. In, uh, in fairness, I, I... Go on. Go on, mate. No, go what on. I was going to say is I, I think the, the PDC could do better because it, he's having a, it's having an impact on the levels that we're seeing from certain players. But I think the players have also got to look at themselves and manage that schedule a bit better. There's no one now, I don't think, who should be playing in everything. You've got to look at managing it completely better. I know Peter Wright's been one who's played in everything before. I think someone like that has got to look at making sure he's not. Even the the younger sort of generation who are, are coming through, if like you lose on for his Joe Tullen, Joe Tullen's probably the ideal one for this year. Someone like that has got to make sure they are managing their calendar even at such a young fit age because it is an awful lot of darts. That includes exhibitions and the events they're doing away from the calendar. To be fair, with the exhibitions, I agree, but there's also a caveat in this. A lot of these exhibitions at the moment are the ones that have been carried over that were cancelled in 2020 and 2021 that the players had already committed to that they can't really get out of. I think um, do they, there's a... Do they then need to play any many events then? There's a, the, the, there's one, there's a gala in Germany this week before the Euro Tour. And I know this is... I think this is the last one that is rolled over from the cancellations. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it, is so, thrown, it is thrown up the impact from the from the top players and we've seen that but equally did anyone predict six seeds losing on Friday we've got the excitement there but is it I guess the flip of that is it fair on the, these top players 
that they're not able to perform to their the best of their ability because they are being thrown on a stage which seems light or has done for the past few months every other day we would be a pro tour or a, a euro event or wherever it may be and it's only in that busy one when does it stop we, we talked about the second half of the year being busy even the first half so it's only that just as busy, especially for the guys who are into Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, no, it, it is, and it's 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 a real double-edged sword in in all this. How the players manage the the, the, the schedules and everything like that. And look, once they've got rid of all the outstanding ones, then it's a little bit different. Then you can pick and choose a little bit more. I think that, and the other one, of course, is. With the greatest of respects, if you are putting on World Series events and big exhibitions, you want the big names in there because you're paying the money. Right? World Series events, we all know, have to be paid for. PC don't put them on for nothing. Um, we've, we've heard that broadcasters get a say in who they want in for World Series events because they pay all the money for it and everything like that. And I, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to other players here, but the the elite have got the pool, and that's who organisers want in. If you've paid an absolute yeah. truckload of money, if if you've paid a truckload of money to host this host this event, you want Michael Van Gogh and Peter Wright go in price. You don't want. The players on the next level down, and, 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 and that sounds bad. It doesn't mean to be because they're great players, but you want the elite. You want the best, not the ones just under it. Do do the players then need to be stronger? Do or the management companies of these players, and just saying there's only so many that these can can play in, and where where it will come to an impact is if we have a. A match play with an awful lot of seeds drop, and then or a world championship at the back end of the year when they've just put too much in. That's only, I think, when you'll see sort of a reaction from a player. Um, I was, I was back to look and reevaluate their thing. Pims just said it there, and I was going to bring it up anyway. There's a very well known player that refused World Series invitations and never got invited again. You can't hide from that. They're, they're, it's there in black and white. That's the that's the issue. But at some point, there's just as much story as having these players there week in week out as there is in underdogs toppling them and and opportunities being afforded to everybody. At the minute, it sounds like we are heading towards or or in an idyllic view by the sounds of the powers that be to a football super league because every every conversation we have every single week is about who wants this commercial and who wants that the players are gonna kill themselves the lifestyle's not healthy no i agree They're literally it's running fine. themselves into the ground health wise and look some of the younger players are taking note and starting to look after themselves a lot better etc but it's very, very difficult for a player who's been doing it for 30 years to go back and change all of that. Yeah, no, it is. Look, yeah, it's... Is the, is, Phil, is, the, is there any surprise that we've had a Premier League that we know how hard that can be with the weekend tournaments as well? But we're talking here about a back to back winner who didn't feature in that Premier League. Well, this is, this, is, that this a is surprise? My point. No, it's not. Because if, if, if you listen to like the, the, the old Premier League format as well, was easier. You had to prep for one game. And, and this includes what Gob said about lifestyle and everything like that. You had to prep for one game. And you knew roughly what time you'd be on. The first game was about quarter past seven. It'd be 45 minutes to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. So you knew roughly within 15 to 20 minutes or so when you were going to be on. Where this, you have to prep for one game. You, you, the emotions, the adrenaline, everything comes up. Huge adrenaline dump if you win. To come up again, to Dan, to come up again. It's tough and everything that goes with it. 
to do that for 16 weeks. And I think that's shown in some of the performances in the Premier League this year that some of the averages were, were shocking. Some of the performances weren't good. And, and that comes by asking them to do this. Yes, it was full of drama um, and the fans loved it in the arenas and I get all that. But I just, I just think that the Premier League, the schedule and everything has had a knock-on to what we're seeing now. And like we said, Johnny Clayton and people like that just look dead on their feet. And we you know, should probably... Go on, go on. Throw it out. Did the fans enjoy it towards the back end? Because the majority of us experienced it early. Nottingham was early. Birmingham was pretty early. And the others that we've uh, spoken the... to have been to earlier events. I'm not saying everybody hated it, etc. But it would be interesting to have somebody compare that went in like week 14 that has been in previous years to the older format and thought if there was still that same buzz around it. Because to me, by the end of it, the, the 10k bonus had worn off a little bit for the players. They already earned stacks being there. Oh, the no, extra 5k so... for fifth place above the table was as sprayed as it was wasn't a massive incentive. The only player that really had anything to play for pride-wise was Michael Smith on the final week, and, and he got there. But let's be honest, once that first game was over with Joe Cullen making the final four, that's it. The, the other six players didn't care. That, look, you don't agree with this, and I'm going to bring it back. It does not matter what the format of the Premier League is anymore. It is too long. 16 weeks travelling in and out of the country for Euro tours in between because... The Premier League is played at the same time where the majority of ranking work is done for the back end of the year. This is how they build up fair and as accurate as possible positioning for all the match play. And then we start looking at the other TV majors, your Grand Prix, your Grand Slam, etc. Your Players' Championship finals. A lot of your work is already done before you get to the match play. European Championship as well. To have 16 weeks on a Thursday night, then leaving first thing in the morning to go to Euro Tours, etc., it's too long, and I genuinely think that's why they're struggling to find a format that fans are receptive to. Because no matter what you do with that, no matter how many players you put in, and no matter how often you alternate those players, 17 weeks later is three and a half months. You just don't care. Four months. I think, for me, obviously I've been to every one of them, I think the fan in the venue every week loved this Premier League format, and I genuinely mean that. I think the fan in the venue on the night liked it because normally we see the venue empty in towards the end, and it didn't. They all stayed to the end to see who won it. I agree with you. The fan at home, in my opinion, was bored of it after 10 weeks. I, I fully agree with you on that one. And this, this I'm not is sure the, the, it took a lot of people 10, to be honest. Well, yeah, but I think I think I think it, for the fan in the venue, it worked. Um, and like you said, MBG's interview at the O2 with Via Play after he lost to was it Michael Smith? I think openly said awesome. he went, "I'm in Berlin, couldn't care less about ten grand." Yeah, because at that, that point, the trade-off for the players having rest and recuperation ahead of other events and travelling and family time. It's worth more to them than 10 grand that is... Look, 10 grand in the bank, nobody is ever going to shrug their shoulders at it massively. But when you're in a position and financially as, as well off as a lot of these players are now, the trade-off between that and how much their their freedom, their time with their friends and family, their rest is worth to them is basic economics. Yeah, no, at that I, point, I that 10 grand doesn't cover the, the sacrifice to a lot of them. But again, it, it's difficult for these players to stand up and complain about it because at the end of the day, the PDC give them opportunities, they're given the Premier League, they're given the World Series, and there is an awful lot of this calendar that is still based on being a good little receptive boy. And it's not based on ability and, and rankings. It's based on, can you say, if I say jump, can you say how high? And how many times? And how many times you're prepared to do that for a payday? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And, it, and and it's interesting. And look, we'll probably find out in the next 36 to 48 hours. But I genuinely expect players to be missing Tria this weekend out of the seats. 
I genuinely expect some of them to, to drop out. Primarily. Know, it will be interesting because there's a couple of players that aren't in there that would then, the earlier they find out, the earlier that would they then get call-ups, a la James Wade, who's currently 17. Yeah, look, right now, I think, if I, if, if I was having a little flutter, I'd go with Peter Wright, Johnny Clayton, Gerwin Price, definitely pull out. If I was having a bet, I don't know this, by the way, or anything like that, but if I was having a, a if I was having me little flutter like I do on the football, they would be my three to pull out. I'd say two of them list. are there. What, two of them go, you mean, out of that three? Yeah. Yeah, well, I do as well. Because they've got commitments the night before. Are they in the exhibition, are they? Right, okay. Yeah. Okay, if they weren't in the exhibition, they'd have pulled. Yeah, if they weren't in, 100%. But I just think that means we're more likely to see them manage their time in the midweek pro tour. That block of four, I yeah. can see a lot of these players playing two and picking and choosing. I'm not sure a lot of them... Depends how they want to manage it. I can see them playing in blocks of two. I'm not sure if I can see them playing the first two, the middle two, or the end two sort of thing. Like, depends if they want more time to rest before they have a crack at it, if they want to carry it on, and then give themselves a couple of days before they start travelling towards Blackpool. Um, the issue a lot of them have got is the schedule and the order of play won't be out for Blackpool and the draw until after those four pro tours, so they can't really plan in advance of when they're playing in Blackpool. Which is why I think well, they'll play the first two, bugger off home, and then plot their Blackpool if They trip. need to practice elsewhere, they can arrange it, and etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, think that might be the taste. I don't know, I think the only one who knows when he's playing is going to be Peter Wright or be on the opening night as reigning champ. Yeah, you, you, you would expect Peter Wright to open the Saturday up. Um, but then, yeah, the rest yeah. Yeah, the rest will play the weekend, I would I would assume, Friday, Saturday, and then do one on the Sunday. Yeah. Well, look, that, that was interesting. That, 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 that got us talking. Um, right, let, let's let's move on. We probably spent probably a little bit longer than I wanted to on that, but it was worth it. I think it was great discussion points. Um, yeah, so from there... Four women's series. Well, yeah. seniors to look <laughs> um, um, From there, we go to the first women's series it's event. Uh, women's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, we, 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 women's series um, number nine, and look, Lisa Ashton takes the title against Eileen de Graff, and I'm going to say it now. Arlene de Graff was player of the weekend. She was sensational across all four of these events. I've been a little bit gutted that she didn't win one. Um, I think, think her performance is merited one. Um, but look, Lisa got the job done. Um, and it's noticeable. One, the amount more nations that are playing in it and the standard is definitely rising within the ladies' game. Yeah, I agree with you around Eileen. I thought she was very good. Um, the, the run she had in the, the first event, just to get to the final, beating Laura Turner, Ashley Truburst, Fallon um, and Lorraine. You know, it's just a great one when you think of the names to beat to that there. Um, and maybe then just run out of um, steam at the end. But yeah, she was fantastic across the whole weekend. But very good to see the numerous different nationals that we had there as you can see on that screen there just looking at the the last 16 you know flags from all over the place australia netherlands ireland um japan there's so, there was so many in there and it wasn't as well the fact that it was just a player coming from there we had numerous players come over i've seen the picture on socials material and a few of them that come over from japan there's so many and i think that's only oh. ever going to grow as well and and from when we see the, the match play, that'll be the, the first the first bit of it will then just go through the roof. Having that opening event on TV, Sunday afternoon, very good crowd. And I think it will be, it will lift this and it will raise questions to the people who are in the WDF who are not coming to these events. Um, who can yeah, push, just a couple who, of who points. Like the can push. Just a couple of points before we move on to the next event. Yeah, I completely agree, boys. See that, some of the Japanese, it was just amazing to see them come over. And is it um, Kasumi Sato? I, I, if I butchered name, I apologise. 
first time I've seen a lot of her. Her throw is absolutely mint. Literally, it's a proper throw, which was great to see. Again, we're talking about fundamentals and things to work with. A massive tick for her. Um, Bob, we'll put the um, women's match play up for the race at the end. Uh, Pim, yes, we do, mate. Unfortunately, she qualified for the UKDA finals weekend in Sheffield. So she was literally about 20 minutes away from um, from Barnsley, but she'd, she'd qualified for that through um, playing with Lincolnshire. Um, so that's why she wasn't there. And I'm gutted she wasn't there. And she won't be at the match play. Um, so that, that's why, mate. Um, so moving on to event number 10. And we have a new name to add to the Women's Series. Roll of Honour, Lorraine Winstanley. Look, she's played brilliantly as well. Beating Rihanna O'Sullivan. Before we touch on the winner of this one, Lorraine, absolutely gutted for Rihanna. She missed, I think, five match starts to win it. And with if she'd have won it, she would have been at Blackpool. I'm absolutely gutted. Gutted for a gob. Yes, that that last day was was pretty tense. But yeah, look when you, when you look back at chances missed for Rianne, it's tough. Obviously, Peter joins us while we're streaming, um, and, and has a good chat with us. Um, but yeah, look, I, I, I don't think you can be she could be too harsh on herself for not winning this final. She's mismatched darts and she's put herself in the opportunity. I think if Rianne's going to look back on her campaign at why she didn't qualify for the match play. It's blanking that first weekend, not picking, not yeah. picking up a penny. Yeah, I think that I agree. First is is the real issue there. <laughs> um, yeah, Boise, what what you just posted to me is completely incorrect because I saw her playing in Sheffield. <laughs> I just spoke to her. Yeah, I'm just I, saying I, what I, the I, official I, one was. I, I, I physically spoke to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was there on the Saturday. Physically spoke to her. Um, but look, Lorraine was was sensational. Um, there was a moment when she beat. I can't remember who it was now, but there was just moments of brilliance from Lorraine um, ac across this. Um, Dita only played in the two days again. We'll touch on that in a minute as well towards the end. Um, but again, Eileen de Graff, another semi-final. Um, yeah, Pem, I agree with you. Um, Romani's throw in the first world in the first women's series looked great. It looked horrific this time. Fully with you, mate. That was really impressive. But the action looks like it's gone to. To Toffee at the moment. Let's go back and see it. Yeah, I, it was awful because it used to be so smooth. Now, um, moving on to event 11. And of course, it wouldn't be a weekend. Lisa's won one. So it wouldn't be a weekend without Fallon winning one. And it's an amazing what a good night's sleep can do. Boise on the Saturday, she fell asleep in the venue. Um, bless her, look, she went through hell to get there. Great commitment levels. You can't fall because it, it would it could have been so easier for her just to stay, miss the Saturday and, and just play the Sunday. But fair play to her, rolls up her sleeves, good night's sleep, and she played really well across this whole event. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to be covering the top half of the draw in event nine. And... I was, when I was on with Jar, I was talking to Jar just about the performances didn't seem Fallon like. They were so inconsistent. There were so many missed starts at a double. Um, and that and that shown across Saturday in the second event as well. So, you know, a lot of that final, uh, semi final, sorry, then Sony, 102 average was just sensational by Fallon. And then down into the final, every time she's here at a weekend event, she seems to pick one up and has put herself in a great position. However, she has done a bit looking over her shoulder because 
I thought Eileen and Lorraine were outstanding um, this weekend. And we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on we'll touch on that when we look at the table. Uh, but yeah, agree that that that's part of the reason why she made the effort to to come back because of, and, of and that gap. What, and what this does, Phil, picking up that picking up just the one. No. Oh. Oh, she's done a job. Oh, he's back. Good play. <laughs> I'm about. <laughs> oh, um, to translate for yeah. you what Lee just said, because I heard it, everyone else did. He just said, uh, "My name's Lee, and I've got a stupid accent." <laughs> <laughs> I only admit that to you, Dob. Don't tell everyone. <laughs> Um, then event number 12, um, Lisa picked up a double for the weekend, beating Eileen de Graff in the final. By this point, the match play slots were all done and dusted job, but it was, it was so interesting that the hour before that, when it was up in the air, was someone going to get caught? Could they get in and everything? It was it was how a race for the match play we wanted and should be. Yeah, especially with some of the main protagonists falling early. Uh, we also had the fact that Chloe came from so far back, effectively. We saw Kirsty Hutchinson potentially looking like she'd do the same with her run in the previous event. Um, it was the most... Look, we, we go over the draw an awful lot when they're first out every one of these events normally checking who's in what half who can get each other and normally we're just looking for the top four going right when will lisa play fallon this time will aileen get involved when will makuru be there when will lorraine etc get involved um but this time we weren't looking for them they, they could crack on or we were a little bit but it was when would the likes of jane densley play them when would how far could katie sheldon go which one of the how far could Rianne sullivan o'sullivan go and how soon would they meet a match where they're under more pressure than a player that's already qualified, basically. And it, it just became a little bit of a minefield straight away. Yeah, and and look, it was it was interesting, like you say, it was it was all on the line here. Huge congratulations to Chloe O'Brien. Um, came from no way, well, not came from nowhere, came from so far back, only 18 years of age. Katie Sheldon again as well. That she'll be kicking herself in that semi-final as well. She missed was it two or three match starts to beat Lisa in that? Semi-final. It was. It was. It was, it was something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but look. Two, three at double twenty. I think I know. She had match starts in the in the decider. Yeah. Might have been more than that, you know. I'm going to be um, completely honest. That was the end of a very long day for me, and I was struggling to keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was also interesting um, as well, there'll be there'll be a few of the women that have learnt quickly about PDC darts that will be adding to the the DRA Christmas party fund for for the stream games. <laughs> yes. um, K K Kirsty's was was brilliant, um, a full a full blown f bomb, which was which was good, and your um. Your mate, Jane, she's 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 going to actually managed to bust one three two in the very, very first leg of this event. Yeah, yeah. Jane also got a ticking off from Vinks for chuntering. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have been worried that I see him in county as well. And do you know, I sort of feel a little bit bad for them because look, the prize men and off here is great in comparative to other women's events, but if they're fined at the same level as men, as the same value not as the same percentage of earnings then they're taking a massive hit here look i i don't think they will be fined as much as what the the regular ones are or they they may if even they get are. a tick on if they might they get a tick get on the wrist yeah because yeah, they're, they're all new to it and stuff like that which look it, it's it's a great it's a great learning curve um um for them all is, is the thing but yeah there, there was a couple of funny ones um which made made me chuckle. Look, I, I love the ladies' game. I think it's superb, and it it's great they're getting these opportunities. Um, 
which is great. So here is how the final race for the women's match play looked. The top eight were Lisa Ashton, Fallon Sherrick, Lorraine Winstanley, Eileen DeGraff, Laura Turner, Rianne Griffiths, Katie Sheldon, and Chloe O'Brien. But I look from where we were this time last year, and this is to both of you, that clump of players underneath, we are now talking about a proper top 16 to 20 names on that list. Yeah. Yeah. Most Without definitely. Doubt. And when you think that Dita Hedman isn't there because of her selection of events this year, um, it, it's just all a little bit mad. And, and Bo Greaves still opted to not compete, which I think we'll get on to in a little while. Um, you add those two into that list, and yeah, that's a very, very good top 20. And, and that's what we wanted it to develop into. Look, the top two are still clear of everybody else right now in that list. But the fact that everything else is becoming so competitive underneath it, I just hope that continues for the rest of the year because there's less spots on offer for everybody now. And if there are clashes with further events, this is where they might start getting that little bit more selective. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I, um, I, I agree. Um, but it's just nice to see because when the women's series was first developed, everyone chunked on it was just for Fallon and Lisa, blah de blah de blah. But the women have embraced it and that strength in depth is now showing. Um couple of points off of this. What you said about Fallon earlier, Boise, that I think if you'd have given her that gap at the start of the weekend, knowing she's going to miss the next four events, she'd have taken that and bitten your arm off for it. It's she's still over two wins, clear of third. Yeah, however, how well, and it, it is down off one weekend, how well Lorraine and Eileen played. Eileen was so unlucky not to pick up a title this weekend. If she can go on another weekend very similar to what she's just done then, it just puts huge pressure on Fallon. I... For me, she has to go to the World Series, but from a PDC perspective, they would want Fallon at the World Championships because of what she's achieved previously there. That if she then misses out because she's at World Series events, I think they'll see that as a massive loss. And I'm not saying she's going to, because we know that Fallon can turn up to the, the weekends that she's going to and then pick up and not only do and qualify, but actually from police actually can go and do that. Um but Lorraine and Eileen have shown that they can put in those weekend performances that can move her ever closer. And it's pressure on Fallon that other players haven't got. Do I think she'll make it yes? Just made it that bit more difficult for her than it does the others. But that is back to, oh, that's back to the debate we've just had earlier about the scheduling. We're talking about the men's day, but that, not the men's day, the, the main event, sorry. The main tour, that can have the same impact here on the, on the women's series with the overlap. Yeah. There is one thing to consider here. Is if that set of women's series goes ahead. I think it will. They're due to be played in Germany, and that does not have a very, very good track record. I agree. Which, um, And I appreciate there was events that was competing with this weekend, and we've spoken about how good the tour is, but numbers were down this weekend. It was only mid-80s. I don't, we've looked at the WGF calendar. We don't think it's competing with anything that has significant ranking status. It's too early for County to get back. However, a lot of these players are no longer chasing a top eight spot in the match play. They're chasing the top two. And the only person that 
really from this moment looks like they've got the game, the financial backing and the endurance to go and catch the top two is Lorraine Win stanley Because we don't know how this is going to roll over to next year's rankings, if it'll be completely start again as it has been or if it becomes a one-year rolling order of merit. Yeah. Um, just going on what Pim said in there as well, that I know of a good few of the women that aren't going to Germany, not because they don't want to travel. The, the issue for them is you can't get home on the Friday, I'm sorry, on the Sunday night. If, if you could get home on the Sunday night, they would go. The ones that I've been speaking to work in education, healthcare, and and at the NHS, and they can't just get time off work on the Monday, so they're not going because they can't get back in time, which is the issue. So I agree. I think numbers will be down. Number numbers will be down from the players who we've seen so far hopefully it means that we'll have players from Europe who have, who have not travelled over to Utah enter so hopefully numbers wise but it might have a it might have an impact on the quality yeah look it, it's one of those ones we're just going to have to to, to wait and see they're, they're not till August um, so look but m- massive kudos um, Philip says, do you think Lisa can be caught? No, I think Lisa will top the order of merit now. Um, she wins one of the tournaments every day. If that record continues, she's not getting caught. It's ridiculous record. <laughs> ridiculous. Let, 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 even if you just go off that, look. Um, so, so, yeah. The other one, before we wrap up the Lady Series and look ahead to the seniors um Dieter and Bo let's discuss um let's do let's do Bo first I just this weekend especially look, I'm just putting that out there I don't care I don't get it and it is the most yeah. stupidest dumbest decision whoever's are advising her has made Go to Romania for a stupid silver event, see whatever they're called, when you're already at Lakeside. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I agree. To, I think it shouldn't even go winning. Honest, it's not just that day, man. More frustrations in this are more with Dieter than they are with Bo. Bo is still very young. We know that has had troubles on the board. Yes, she's done on and picked up the title in April, but it seems like she's got her mindset that she's going to focus on that. For me, I, I don't let it with Dita. It's more than Bo right now. Because Bo seems to have set a stall out that that's what she's doing. I didn't understand Dita coming to playing two events. It just didn't make no sense at all whatsoever. Um. Should Bo be playing in these? I thought she should. Does she's a she's a very very good darts player, and she would upset a fair few players on the board with the numbers she can hit. Um, however, it seems like has made her decision, and that's her decision for what looks like at least the rest of this year. We've which right or wrong, it seems like she's set a stall out, and that's what it is. The D to one, I just didn't understand that at all. Why come to two events? Because she then went to the UK DA finals, which was 20 minutes down the road. So she was in the vicinity anyway. Yeah. Why yeah, come no, to two no, events over here? Yeah, yeah I, 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 don't, I don't get it either. Um, Her, her reasoning behind it, the fact she's um, 
on the board of directors for the WDF and everything like that. I just don't buy into it. Well, he's not a partner, is I think, which is why yeah, I shouted I, I, for I, Isle of Wight. But Isle of before Man. Isle of Wight, she said she was missing the first block of four, but was going to commit to the rest of the tour, and then didn't. And by then, you just playing catch up and and chaser and I don't know for someone that was top two in this before and has played at the PDC World Championship now perhaps she's just done look I've done it brilliant I'll go and stick with my county and whatever else this time but the frequency with which everything else seems to be winning at the minute compared to playing in this women's series for Dita is a little bit of concern especially for someone who, who holds the standing in the game that she does Bo though I don't get it. And look, we said this. We said this right at the start of the tour, and I probably said this on Saturday or Sunday, and I'll probably say this again. We said this right at the start of the tour that not everybody aspires to be the next Bill Taylor. When numbers were struggling, not every woman player has has had the time, or the dedication, or the opportunities in the last 10, 15 years to put the practice time in to be able to go and play at a level that they feel comfortable with, that they can go and compete with, and the frankly, isn't going to get ridiculed on social media. I think if the Women's Series had started before the invention of Twitter, there'd have been loads of people out there. But the fact that every single dart and every single average is tracked, every single person in the world can have an opinion in a public forum of it, makes it more difficult for players that have only ever played recreationally or casually or as part of a team, really, to go and compete and think that they can play at a level, especially when the top couple of players in this are so, so dominant that effectively their chances of winning or, or fluking a win, if you like, are severely diminished in comparison to perhaps the men's game where male players in the UK in particular tend to be that little bit more dedicated, but a little bit more time in, that little bit more aggressive and competitive. And it's easier for them to go and cause an upset. Anyone can have their day. And I'm not saying that's not impossible in, in the ladies' game, but it's just less likely. But when you set your stall out and become a world champion, you've almost put yourself on that pedestal to go and be the best player in the world. And at the well, minute, your competition for that accolade are playing for more frequently in more professionally run tournaments and have the opportunity to play in three of the most watched televised tournaments in the world. And there's absolutely no way anybody can deny Bo Greaves' ability. Um, someone, Matthew just asked, could Bo Greaves win one if she played? I think she could have qualified for the match play in one weekend. I genuinely think she's that talented. She's that good. She's got history of beating literally every single player in this field at the start of the day she needed two finals out of four admittedly that number rose a bit but she needed two finals she goes on to win one of those which again she's more than capable of doing as a world champion that has 100 plus averages in her locker if available and her, her average game is somewhere in the mid 80s to low 90s when she's on it and and again, this by the way, I I I don't think this, but it adds fuel to the fire. There was a lot of speculation and a lot labelled at Bow saying she only won late side because Fallon and Lisa weren't there. Look, I, I don't buy into that because she's talented enough to win it anyway. But by her not going to these and going head to head with the best adds fuel to that fire, Boise. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying she wouldn't have won Lakeside, but by her ducking this, makes it look as if she doesn't want to face the best. It it, it does look that way. I I don't agree with that sentiment of well, you never know if Lisa and Fallon would have been there. Who knows what would have happened? But no, no, that's what I mean. Bo had Bo's had the game to win it anyway, but it makes it yeah, look it's open, it puts that there. yeah, it certainly opens up those questions. With, I, I agree with Dob. She should have come probably one weekend, maybe, maybe needed to, but probably could have done it in one. Same thing we said about Lisa and Fallon. They, Lisa, if you look at Lisa's results, she would have only needed one weekend, and she would be there. It does open up those questions, 
I just hope it's a short-term view at the moment that that's where her focus is and she wants to see it the rest of the year and then she's going to review what's the best thing for her to do because at the moment, go into some of these events, some I understand because she is world champion and some of the events that are there, I, I can see why she's at them because her focus is even reigning that championship next year. But ones like this weekend... Does raise them questions. Up, up until because... this point, I can I can justify the logic and the reasoning behind Bo not playing in the women's series. The first event clash did it clash with the WDF? The first one did, yeah. Yeah, and the second one clashed with the Isle of Wight, which was a gold or platinum ranked event that guaranteed her qualification to next year to defend her title. Those two I can completely understand and justify. But this one, chasing ranking points in Romania in an incredibly depleted field for comparative, I'd say, less prize money. Dob, I don't think it's chasing ranking points. Sure. I don't think I honestly um, don't think it's chasing ranking points. She's still 18. I do and I don't because once you let everybody else settle in a new organisation, you come in into their den effectively. And you come in with a massive target on your back, being Bo Greaves. The earlier you get in there, the earlier you settle, the more you can go in and pick and choose and, and do what you want. And again, in terms of environments, and this is going to sound really snobby and I don't care, one's going to a holiday camp, one's going to play in luxury. You go to not the many PDC, people right? the bar- There's not many people. There's not there's right. not many people who say the Barnsley Metrodown's luxury, Phil. But, but, no, it, but in, the, in the environment, <laughs> it's all done properly. Where you go to some of the others, and for the want of a better word, it is just a massive piss up. Darts is secondary. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm not even hiding behind the facts anymore. I don't care. I just, I just hope it's a, it's the focus on the WDF for now, and we didn't see a switch. I don't think we'll see it this year. I think we'll have the same debate throughout the rest of the women's series. Because there's not going to come over and play in the last uh, one or two weekends. He's not going to play in Barnsley. He's not going to be travelling to Germany. I'd be very surprised if I really saw to see him in the last four. Is not going to then be putting herself in that mix. Um, but hopefully, from next year, we'll see her in. We'll see her in this event. Do we expect to see her? Probably not. But you boys know what I mean. That it's, it's run professionally, as in everything that goes with it and some of the pictures that I see from the amateur events just oh it just winds me up. Yeah but do they have a pirate themed water park? <laughs> um take that as a nap. <laughs> <laughs> um look everyone knows my opinion I just I, there's certain parts of it there's certain parts of the professional game I don't like. And I just wish they were eradicated, and especially in the amateur game. Because it involves people I, getting I the stomach bug. I don't see it changing. I don't see it changing. Stomach bug or not, I don't see it changing, Mr. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. I'm saying no more on that matter at all. If you want to, so, that's up to you, but I'm saying no more on that one. Well, I've to, still to got fair, some friends there. <laughs> oh, I haven't. They, they all hate me after the first first hour, so I'm all right. <laughs> um, but <laughs> uh, moving on to Gobs, um, baby, the World Gosh. Seniors match play in Hull this weekend, Gob. 
Yeah, boy. New trophy out today. It's lovely. What a lovely set of trophies. It is, but it's the worst out of the three. Yep. Oh, yeah. And I didn't do the announcement either. But, yeah, what a lovely set of trophies. Oh, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. The, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. But out of the three, if I'm marking them, it's three. Yeah. But the bar was set so high from the other two. <laughs> Yeah, no, agreed. Um, look, yeah, <laughs> it'll be it'll be all right. But now, look, another good looking lineup. Um, first of all, there's a lot of questions on social media. God, why David Cameron isn't in? We'll get that one out of the way. Um, first of all, the criteria for this was set back in March when he hadn't won it. Yeah. Um, that that's why he's not there. Obviously, winning. The Masters at Lakeside, he qualifies him for the World Championships and he'll be in that and everything like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, there. Um, but the, the, the schedule is, is out starting on Friday. Um, sorry, that, that's the best, biggest we can get the, the, the names, unfortunately. But we'll, we'll talk you through the first round games, as always. It's loading it up. I'll get in. There's a wiki page for it at last. <laughs> that wasn't me. Already on it. Uh, to, to be fair, no, they've said the same about the PDC. No one knows. Us. The PDC don't do their tournament wiki pages. Someone just does them. It's great. Um, we'll, we'll meet that so, person one day. Yeah. Um, so the Friday uh, night, yeah, Philip. Uh, let me just ask a quick question. Philip says, Any way to watch World Seniors match play in Germany? Sport One again are broadcasting in Germany. I think that also covers Switzerland and Austria. Uh, BT Sport are your hosts in the UK and everywhere else. It is on 24 7 TV, five pound a session or ten pound for the entire weekend. So if you think you're going to tune in more than once. You're not based in the UK, Germany, Austria, or Switzerland, I think, are the regions that come Sport One cover. Then grab yourself an event pass for the equivalent. I presume you can pay in your own currency. Um, £10 for the entire weekend. I don't think is too bad. No, it's all right. Um, so, Friday kicks off with uh, Trina Gulliver against Dieter Hedman, Keith Della against Colin McGarry. John Lowe against Kevin Painter. Taylor will play the winner of the first game, Trina or Dita Gob. Yeah, it's interesting that these two have been matched up against each other. Uh, guarantees a female player in the next round as well. Um, I'm quite excited for this one because these two have got plenty of, of history. And I think we've seen better performances from Trina. I think Dieter is, is a little bit of a worry right here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I do as well. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Will this be the first time that Dieter's played publicly in this environment since the issue with double nine I guess so yes it'll be interesting to see where our mindset I'm not sure how big an issue that is in the past because everybody else that we've seen that with before has either doubled down or it's been too close or whatever else Dita has, has said her piece on it she clearly didn't realise it wasn't in at the time has gone back and watched it, has seen it, has awarded the leg the other way, etc. I don't think too much can be held against it. It's not going to happen here. We've got two of the best referees in the world. No, I'm not saying that, but there will be media attention around it. And I'm just putting out there for our channel. If we get to speak to her, I'm asking her about it. I don't, I don't mean to be horrible. Look, I criticised Phil Taylor <laughs> at the time when he did his. 
and I say exactly the same thing here with Dieter's one. I don't like the fact that she stopped and looked. And I said the same about Phil's. If you just go up, take the darts out, I've not got an issue with it, but I don't like that stop and pause. Sorry, I just don't. Fair enough. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I, I think she beats Trina. Um, I think Trina beats her anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. Moving on, I think Keith Deller is rather pleased that this is Colin McGarry and not Richie Housen. Potentially. If I'm Keith Deller, I'm not thanking the draw for putting him in a prelim against any of the qualifiers. There is some lots and lots of talent coming through Reading at these events. They are fiercely contested. The standard is excellent. And Colin McGarry has been incredibly consistent throughout. He's been the next man up for the last two events. And look, I, I get on with Richie incredibly well. I think him and Lynn are both fantastic people. But I'm also delighted that Colin has the opportunity. He's a man that's played against Phil Taylor before on TV. I agree. But I just think it would Richie take him to play him again because he'd have to win three games. But. Colin will not be afraid of it. And also, we saw Keith Deller quite animated at the Lakeside, I thought, especially in that match of Richie in that, in that first set. Colin McGarry yeah. will give it back. He will give it back. I'm really looking forward to that one. Oh, yeah, I think it'll be a great game. But I think Keith comes through it for me. I like the fact that he played a couple of nights in the Live League to get, to get some match sharpness. Um, I just think... Del Boy's doing doing the right things, ticking the right boxes, apart from those bloody red trousers. Obsessed with them. Yep. Obsessed with them. When our colour scheme is green, it's terrible. <laughs> um, John Lowe, Kevin Painter. I look. What what is the format in this got? By the way, first two. Best best of fifteen, up until semi-finals, and then best of seventeen. Kevin Painter wins 8 0. This will be a landslide. I'm going to give John 2. I'm going to give John 2. I, I Kev's think fantastic. Kevin, but if, if Kev misses a dart a double, Kev's got the ability to miss six darts a double. And also, I still think John Lowe's action is absolute mustard. If I was him, I'd be considering wearing glasses because I genuinely don't know how the darts don't go where they need to be every single time. Because if you ever want to look at an action, fundamentally, John Lowe's is solid. The man's mid-70s, and he has a better action than every single person in this chat room, I guarantee you. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, John. Sorry, Ryan. And whoever else is sat watching, but on it, it's just mustard. Yeah, look, I, I think Kevin wins easily. Boise? Yeah, one-sided. Um, I'm not sure it's a nil, but one-sided. Uh, a top of the legs, maybe. And then the power will play the winner of the first one. Um, and, and again, I think whoever it is, it's, it's one-sided again. Yeah. I expect so. There might be a couple of, of nervous moments. I still think, look, as receptive as the darts world has been about Fallon's success on TV, I still think with this generation, there is that little bit of a stigma about losing to a female dart player. A hundred percent. And that will provide 100%. the edginess that Taylor won't like in the early stages, especially if the winner comes out and wins the first couple of legs, puts him under, and he struggles to find his range, then there might be that squeaky bum time. But other than that, I, look, Phil was better at the last event. He wasn't the all-conquering Phil Taylor. The fact he made the final and was still disappointed with his performances and still felt a little bit subpar, etc. 
I think there's more to come. The fact this is closer to Lakeside than the gap between Circus Tavern and Lakeside was, I think means he can be that little bit more intense with the match practice. And then he's got so long off before the next block. He can have a little bit of a dip and know when to gear up ready for the World Championship next time. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, um, it plays to his favour. I, I do think as well that a lot of the times we talked about someone playing in a prelim, if they come through it, they've got the advantage in that first round. I actually think it'll be a detriment to D2 or Trina being on the same night. I don't think that will help. Uh, and I expect control from Phil. And the fact that they are close up, I would be surprised if he's not really put the darts there much and he's been putting the practice in since the last event. Agreed. Uh, moving on to the Saturday, we open up Tony O'Shea against Brian Dawson, boys. Um, I was quite impressed with Silver back at Lakeside, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but I'm very impressed. I didn't, I didn't see Brian at Reading. I know Dob was there, but I was very impressed with Tony O'Shea and the run that he had to the, to the back end. So, expecting good things in this one, but anyone who comes through the qualifiers at Reading has, has, must be playing good stuff, as we've seen the names who, who are missing out. One being a semi-finalist, that's uh, the last one in which he and so should be a good day. Lisa I'm going back Tony, though. Yeah, I, I think I'm going Tony as well. You go... I don't know. Dawson's just a little bit of a scrapper, a little bit of a battler. He's been consistent. I'm not sure he's got the the ridiculous level A game to put these guys under pressure, but he's got a solid enough base that he's going to be competitive. And if it goes a little bit scrappy, then you never know, especially in the first round. Um, early on as well, first game in the afternoon is never nice for these guys who are more acclimatised to playing later in the evening less preparation time, etc. Um I think O'Shea will just edge it, though. Just. Lisa Ashton against Paul Hogan. This is intriguing, this game. Really intriguing. Because we've seen Hoagie be brilliant on TV, but we've also seen him throw in an absolute stinker as well. As Lisa, it's very up and down at the moment. This could be gold one-sided or both not at the not at the races this has the potential to be anything yeah I've, it doesn't i've been Funny. i've been disappointed with lisa at the seniors i mentioned it on uh saturday when i was speaking to jar about it she's been one of the players who i think to each event i've sort of built up and says oh she's playing well we've seen her do very well on the women's series and it just hasn't clicked at the seniors yet and but this could be the day and that little section she's in could be the tournament that she needs to get a, a seniors event sort of up and running we know what she can do um but same can be said against paul holden you know the guy who seems to play every single year day open um no surprise to see him come through a qualifier the man just seems to qualify for these events and he'll be it will be. I think it will be close. I, I do see it being very close. Um, but I can't back Lisa just on the base of what she's done at the senior so far. Go. I thought I was going to sneeze. Um, yeah, look, I'm the same. Paul Hogan's just got this tenacity about him. He's very much in the same category as, as Jane Densley, as you mentioned earlier there. He will be chuntering away to himself. I've noticed that over the last couple of events. He's a little bit of a effort behind the players, quite frankly, when he's playing. Um, I don't think he was too happy to be playing Lisa. Um, but like you said, her performance is so far. She's capable of just going berserk, and we're still yet to see it. And I just want to see it because she goes berserk once, she can go deep in this tournament and trouble absolutely everybody. But we're just not I seeing agree. that ridiculous level often enough at the minute. We're seeing a consistent and solid enough level in the women's series. But I just want her to produce that three or four leg spin where she goes sub 15 or, or 15s and really put her opponent under pressure and see how they respond. And I'm hoping 
it'll be in this match, but I'm not sure it will. And I'm going to say Hogan progresses. I'm going Ashton wins. I think this is the weekend she goes berserk. Got no substance to back it up with, but that's just what I'm going with. <laughs> Crazy fool. Um, this one intrigues me. John Part against Peter Manley. What I really want to see, and Gob, you're going to hate this, I want to see the full Peter Manley repertoire of dark arts. I want to see him trying to put John Part off, playing all kinds of mind games and tricks. I want vintage Manly. There are two things with that. One, I don't think it will work on John Part. I think he's I'm been not, around I, the I, block I, for too long. I just and want two, to see it. The minute he starts it, John Part is as blunt as they come. He will tell Peter where to go. That's part of the reason why I want it. <laughs> <laughs> and I also think he, he's, he's even more so these days than he has been before, as well, especially now he's got his podcast, etc. John is not afraid of an opinion. And if Peter starts doing that, we might get even more firework. But I just don't <laughs> think it will work in that regard. At that point, he's got to try and beat him on the board. And just the fact that Party's playing CDC events, he went to Q School, he's, he's just had that little bit more match practice than I think Peter has. And I appreciate at the oh, Circus yeah. Tavern, Peter has just come from Q School, etc., with his commitments within the PDC um, and whatever else. But I haven't heard an awful lot about Peter on the board since. No, look, I, I think it's one side. I think part wins easily. I just want to see the repertoire, obviously. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think part does win it easy. Um, I'm not sure how much it would worth on John Part. Um, what I'd like to see, yeah, why not? But I, I think John Park wins it two, two or three. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, then the winner of the Keith Della Colin McGarry game plays Peter Everson. Here's my issue. I understand that he won the match play. But I don't think Peter Everson should have been in the first round proper. I think he should have been in one of the prelims. Oh, look at me. We've got we've got no substance to base this off. As in, I can't remember the last time I saw Peter Everson throw a dart. Me neither. And I, look, I asked him about that. He said the darts have been out of the case. He's practicing. He is managing a shoulder issue with physio. But if he is half as good as his belief in himself still, we're going to get a bloody good match. Oh, yeah, we are. Look, I, I just... With the others, again, I'm going to talk about this in the evening session as well. Um, I just think that the lack of proper match time, practice, time on the board. In my head, I still think I'm good. But realistically I'm shy. But my belief's still there, but it doesn't make me any doesn't make me good. And I just think if Della comes through McGarry, it'll go for Everson as well. I think so. Yeah right. I think whoever comes through it will the through him, but I see the argument with it. I'd probably throw Ronnie Baxter into the mix of that as well. Well, I was about to say, I, the, for me, there's absolutely no that Terry Jenkins absolutely batters Ronnie Jen, um, Ronnie Baxter, <laughs> absolutely batters him. Yeah. And if Baxter averages over seventy three, I'll be surprised. There you go. I said. <laughs> it's very precise. I, I saw him at an exhibition. It was last year. Was it last year? Maybe, yeah, late last year. And no word of a lie, it was like the dog and duck against the red lion bee. It was horrific. Well, I, I guess the only thing done it, he's been quite volatile in previous tournaments that he wasn't in. He's now in this one, he's also in the first round. He hasn't done a, the prelim. It's them up for him to show why he's been putting it. 
City to sort of put a push up, isn't it? And you got to do it in the first round against Terry Jenkins, who's playing some decent stuff. So, I yes, he's in the Jenkins first round. Out. It's not a nice draw. Oh, no, I think Jenkins absolutely batters him and moves off into the sunset into the quarterfinals. I don't disagree. Yeah, I agree. Um... O'Shea or Dawson against Thornton. That's a tough one, that is. Look, Robert Thornton didn't play particularly well at Lakeside, but bounced back, played well in the live league. And I, I think, for me, Thornton comes through whoever that is. Yeah, I think so. Look, we say he didn't play particularly well, but he had the pressure of being the defending yeah. world champion come in on him. Wasn't able to use the live league for practice in that block because of when finals week fell, meaning that if he qualified, etc., he couldn't play. So there was, there was no senior involvement in that block of the live league in that build-up. And then he ended up playing the eventual winner in round one after he'd already come through an incredibly tough match. No matter who had come through that match, if it had been Painter, Thornton was in for a tough game. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I, I just think that he comes, uh, for me, Thornton comes through. You agree, Boise, or are you going different? No, I'm, I'm done with Thornton. I think Thornton... We'll get through that one. I don't think it's a bad little section that Thornton's in, and I expect him to be better than we saw last time. Um, and then we have Martin Adams against Bob Anderson. And at Lakeside, we all know Wolfie was struggling with injury a little bit. But again, last week at the Live League, signs that the Wolf is on the return. Yeah. I think and he, he was good to see. He's one, he, obviously, he's one that we, we we all love seeing, um, and they expect a fairly one-sided affair in this one. If we see the Wolfie that we saw last week, and not what we've seen at light side. Um, and then final game of the opening round, Larry Butler plays the winner of Ashton against Hogan. And I've got to say, at the Worlds, and that was a long while ago, but I was quite impressed with Larry Butler. It was, it was, again, he was steady. Him and Terry Jenkins are probably my standouts from the World Championship because they just stayed at a level. And it means you're going to have to be yeah. very, very good to beat them. I'm not sure if they've got that extra gear in them, but they're going to be competitive. They're going to be steady. Look, he's still playing CDC invites, etc. And again, that match practice we've seen already can be a factor. I agree. Right, gents, I would like your finalists and your winners of the first World Seniors match play in Hull, please. Again, chat room, get involved. Who do you think? Maybe you just need to bring your semi-final game to the final, Jim, because you were unbelievable in that semi. Right, Boise, finalists and winner. Rob Thornton beats Adams in the semi to get to the final. And I think Thornton made it two senior titles by beating... Kevin Painter in the final, who gets the better retailer in the semi. Go. I too have Painter beating Taylor in the semi. (laughs) 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 Where? He will play Tony O'Shea, who beats Paul Hogan in the semi. I think it will be, again, I agree, top half. I think it will be a Taylor Painter final. 
don't he? Sorry, sorry, yeah. Taylor edges him. Bottom half, I think it will be a Wolfie Thornton. The same as at Lakeside, uh, the Tavern, sorry. And I think history repeats itself. Thornton wins. And I think Thornton beats Taylor in the final. Interesting. There we go. Um, right, chat room. We've got a couple more bits to go through, but start getting your questions in and ready for question time. Um, uh, evening, Mace. Hope you are good, buddy. Um, doing a sit down with Mace on Wednesday. Everyone as well. I agree, Chris. And Jim said if McGarry brings his A game, he wins. He is solid. And he's got the. He, I've seen him win from both positions. Chris, did you. You beat him on Friday night in the. Masters qualified, in not But he's just so solid, so consistent. You don't throw many games away, if that makes sense. Uh, a few more questions in the chat room. Is Paul in playing this weekend? No, he's not. He was invited to the first one. He won the fans event. Uh, fans vote to qualify for the Masters, but he wasn't invited to the match play. Uh, Mace didn't get an invite. He tried to qualify for the last one. He was on holiday for this one, Mace. You've got some terrible timing, buddy. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's solid. Um, right, live league. We'll cover this one quickly. First of all, finals just gone on Saturday. What a finals night as well, by the way. Absolutely sensational six. Um, Graham Usher, Matthew Edgar, and Andy Jenkins qualified for Champions Week. Um, look. Jenkins was shocking on Thursday, then played really, really well on the Friday and the Saturday. Uh, the final between Graham Usher and Matthew Edgar, really, really good. Graham Usher winning it. Um, so that was it. This week, what a week this is. Good luck picking your final three. Good luck picking the six for, for the final on Saturday. Group A, Connor Heenahan, Thibaut Tricol, Nathan Gervin, Davey Prusen, Arjan Konterman and Gilles Van Veen. Sorry if I butchered his name. Um, Gilles. Group B. Group B. Mike Gillett, James Richardson, Chaz Barstow. Group C. Reese Hayden, Kai Van Young, Scott Walters. Good luck picking winners out of this. What an unbelievable I... week this is. That is tough. There are really tough. Bad. There's no real bad watches in there either. Everyone gets on with it. I like that. Yeah. Um, of course, we've got debuts for the three Dutchmen and Reese Hayden. Uh, Chaz Barstow, we all know about. Kai Fan Young. Scotty Walters has always played well. Mike Gillett has a knack of making um, finals night um, as well. Connor Heenahan on his day, superb. Thibaut Tricol got to the Lakeside final. And Nathan Gervin was sensational in phase three so look this is a real tough week on the live league to call looking forward to it mace is in the hot seat this week for you um so all good there um what else have we missed there'll probably loads in a week of darts we have some results from various events martin lukeman won the uh ukda yeah. national single national finals Men's event, uh, the women's event was won by Vicky Krim over Steph Stutley. Uh, men's pairs, I thought this one was really interesting, actually. Um, Steph Stutley also doubled up in the women's pairs, by the way, with Deborah Watlin. Uh, but the men's pairs were won by Chris and Gordy Doby. And it doesn't yeah. look like they were tested an awful lot throughout this entire weekend. I've, uh, one, two, three, four, five. They dropped seven legs from the one two eight to the win. It's not bad, is it? That's ridiculous. 
appreciate his first of all, but that is ridiculous. Yeah, I like uh, that. The like result that. in Romania as well. Lumman and Veenstra won the men's pairs. The women's pairs, Bo Greaves and Joe Rolls. Uh, men's classic, Luke Litzler beat Yella Klassen in the final. Uh, Aaron Monk and Mike Gillett, the other semi-finalists. Uh, Neil Duff beating in the quarterfinals. Um, in the ladies' classic on the Saturday, uh, Cicerova beat Ros Bulmer. In the final, Ros actually beat uh, Bo Greaves on the way to the final in the semi-final. And Veronica Ihaz, the Hungarian that we saw at the um, Women's Series a few weeks ago, was there as well. And then the men's international, Patrick Kovacs. I think he was the online WDF singles champion over lockdown. He beat Scott Marsh in the final. Uh, and in the ladies' event, Bo Greaves did get around on some silverware, beating Joe Clements 5-0 average to 88.4. Pretty steady from Bo, but uh, you'd expect her to take down both, I think, if, without being disrespectful to the rest of the field. Um, I think that that's all the results from all of those. Uh, I think so. It's a Euro Tour this weekend as well. Uh, the draw... Be Thursday, so there's no, no point we, we only get, No, we only get a press release on the Thursday with the draw. Um, so, before we do question time... Um, Here's the prizes. We got two of these to give away. I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet. We'll work this out when we finish off air. But the prizes are: we have two framed Phil Taylor shirts to give yeah, boy. away. <laughs> two, two of these beauties. To give away for the 25k giveaway. And we'll In the work words out of the out. movie, hello there. Hello there. Um, so keep your eyes peeled coming this week, how we're going to do it. Um, so, right, question time. Get them in, everyone. Fire away. And keep them clean. <laughs> One, one that I saw earlier that it goes back to the debate that we was having about bow, but Andrew, uh, Adrian Thomas made a good point. Perhaps I was seeing the pressure that Fallon's had on her shoulders and decided not to make the step at us just yet. Do you think that has an impact? No, because if that was the case, you put yourself in the market by going and playing on TV at Lakeside anyway. But only once... yeah, but only in one event. But she played in all the streams on the Isle of Man and everything like that. So for me, that doesn't really stack up. If you, if you didn't want that pressure, you wouldn't have played in the Worlds. I see that. It's just it's just another thought on it because there's got to be some rationale there, isn't there, as to why it's just. Be nice to know the reason behind that one. Just I'm not um, through any more. Uh, Lendl, he's he's been asked, um, but but didn't want to. Um, Harry, maybe um, it will be confirmed this week. I think possibly. Rid of him. <laughs> I'll be the OD king while you're away. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, it'll be confirmed this this week. Um, Adrian says, "Do you think a lady will be invited to the World Series next year? If so, would it be Fallon in the end, or depends on results in, uh, in the Grand Slam Women's Series, Lisa possibly?" Um, well, I don't think it'll depend on the winner of the order of merit. It would no. more de be dependent on if, let's say it is Lisa, if Lisa went and won multiple times at the World Championships, 
then there's a potential. But I don't think it would go off the base of the women's order of merit. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be Fallon or none. I don't Probably, see Fallon yeah. being replaced. I can potentially see two. I can potentially see Lisa going with Fallon if she picks up the winning match play and has a couple of wins on the Slam or World Championship. But it's almost a justification for taking Fallon as well, rather than anything else. Yeah. Um, early one, Sam says, who are your guys picked for the match plays back in Gezi? Um, I I think if Gezi's well rested, I I like I like Gezi. I think right now there are more questions around the top 16s than there are the others at the moment. I think there are a lot. Of, uh, there are a lot of questions. Either, Your Premier League eight, I think, are the ones you've got concerns for. Yeah. Look, Van Gogh and could yeah. take you down at any time. Jesse looks knackered. Johnny looks knackered. Marcus Smith looks like he's struggling a bit. James Wade has right. lost a few points on his average since his trip in, trip to hotel. Since his stay in hospital, Peter Wright looks a shadow of the player that he's been. Um, they're the two I've got my eyes on: Lendl, Luke or Dimmy. I just think that they're both fresh. Hungry, love the TV stage, love the cameras. Uh, are better rested, as still picking up wins here, there, and everywhere. Um, and they've got the belief. And if you give them an inch, they'll take it. I yeah. I think Rob Cross would have a good one as well in Blackpool. Yeah. I can see that coming. I really can. Obviously, it's always difficult to say pre-draw. Uh, Dimmy, it's hard to say then, it's obviously winning two tournaments and looking as good as what he's in the back end of them more than anything. Um, I see the tournament coming for Rob Cross. Still think he's playing on his mind a bit about not being in this year's Premier League. Um, but I can see him following up with yeah. the tournament in Blackpool. I think the advantage um, Cross has got over the ones that we just listed in, in Luke and Dimmy is Cross can win with his B game. I'm yeah. not sure Dimmy and Luke can scrap through. They're on it. They are magicians. But it's learning to win ugly for them. I think Rob Cross has got that about him. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about Hetter's B game. He's definitely up there in contention, I think. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Many of them just produce. Uh, do you think uh, Momo Zhu will play in the Women's Series in future events? I hope so. Obviously, played in the PDC World Cup before. Um, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see her play. Yeah, that's what I mean. About yeah, twenty. It looked like it. it sounds weird, but her and the opponent she was playing. I'm not sure if it's the way that they had the camera set up and the delay between it crossing over, but it almost didn't look real. Yeah. The release timings of both actions compared to when they were going through the air, and it might have just been the angles and whatever. It looked really weird. I'd love to see her action again with a with a PDC camera on it. Do you know what I mean? Rather than a split streaming webcam. Yeah, I I agree. Um, what else have we got? Uh, evening, Johnny. Hope you are good. Um, Philip says, do you think the World Match Play champion will 100% be in the Premier League next year? Yeah. Uh, the, the Premier League is one of the ones that you just... The, sorry, the Match Play is one of the ones you just can't ignore. Mm, depends who it is. No. They have to be... They have to if, be... If, if, if the World Match Play champion is not in the Premier League, they'll be uproar. But it justifies them leaving out major winners elsewhere even more so, especially... If it is somebody like Jose or Mensor who is, for TV, not that appealing on the eye. But it's the Especially when you've got Danny Nopper as UK Open champion. I think he's going to struggle to get in. You've got Dimmy who's won back-to-back -back World Series events. Luke's won multiple Euro tours. And there's still the time the for the rest of the events as well. 
it might be the match play field, but if, say, Danny's won the UK Open, Jose de Souza wins the match play, Luke Humphreys goes and wins will, the grand plan. De Souza will be in. It's the, apart from oh, the world, it's the Jimmy if they go and win the Grand Slam and the Grand Prix yeah. between them. They have to be. They have to it's be. the set. Yeah. Forget, no, forget the world. What's that criteria? You can give it all you forget want, but world. you know as well as I do that Dimmy and Luke are far more attractive prospects than Jose de Souza. Jose yeah, de Souza wasn't that. one in the Premier League the year he got in. No, don't forget that because it goes against everything forget you've argued for the last six forget months. The it's the it's the biggest ranking event outside the world. It's I, mean, a I appreciate that. The, the winner I appreciate of the world match that, and I really understand that. The but, the they don't have to be in it. They do. They don't have, have to, to be, be in the Premier League. They, do. they don't. They do. The they winner of the really world match play has to be in the Premier League. Has no. to be. End of. I'm not having it. The field's cut today. No, because what happens if Clayton Price, if your top four don't win a TV event, and then your other TV winners are Danny Nopper, Jose de Souza, then Humphreys wins one, Cross wins one, Cullen wins another. Marco Smith wins one, whoever. So, so then your winners are just on the match play and Grand Prix? You're not picking Jose over those guys. And if you think if the Pumasi will be playing against everything you said for the last eight months about being commercially viable and picking boxes. But the match play winner will have to be in. Have Winning that be. one trophy does not tick a box. And that goes against everything you've sat and argued for since we've started this show. But it's the match play. It has to be in. No, it doesn't. It does. The, the winner of the world match play has to be in the Premier League. Disagree. Outside the world, it's the biggest ranking event. It has Mate, to be. I would, I would take this stance every single week. But with everything that you've been saying for the last six to nine months, Other and the fact it's going to be eight players again, then no, it Other doesn't have to be in. It's changing. And Other the BBC's disregard for winning titles over commercial viability has become a real thing. Oh, it has, but it's the world match play, right? The other ones that you say, picking, like, plotting the other ones against each other, I agree with. They will pick the most commercially viable. But the world match play champion has to be in the Premier League. Otherwise, we all might as well pack up and go home. Yeah, we might as well. And then finally, you might see the point I've been trying to make for the last six to nine months. No, no, I'd still commercially pick it's genuinely, it's genuinely a possibility that if somebody that is less appealing to TV right now, i.e. a Jose de Sousa, and look, I feel really bad for picking on Jose, but he's been there before, didn't generate enough interest in his home country, TV sales weren't great in Portugal, and there was a major consideration about him not being in there as the Grand Slam champion over somebody that hadn't won a TV event that year. We know that conversation happened. You can't then I tell agree. me that if he wins the match, play, he's hundred percent in in a diminished field when he wasn't wanted last time over Dimmy, but, who can speak five languages and is on course to win a TV tournament this year, and everybody else that's been in it so far. Right now, the only I, player that you can really be missing out from the field just gone is Gary Anderson. Leah and I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, I agree with. And but the, the, the triple crown tournaments, yes, I've called them the triple crown tournaments to provide you up. Those three are on a pedestal above everything else. The Premier League, the Worlds, and the match play are on a pedestal above anything else. All the tournaments underneath it, I fully agree that if someone wins one of those, they're not guaranteed. They're not on a pedestal above Barry's pockets. Rule number one, Philip. I'm using your own crap argument for the last God knows how many shows against you. Oh, rule one's always there, but I just think the world match by champion will always be in. I, I genuinely believe that. Any other tournament apart from the world, the Premier League, and the match play are in danger of not being in for commercial viability. I'm 100% on that one. But those three, I think, are there. You're wrong. I'm with you, Phil. I'm 100% with you. Match play winner yeah. has to no, be in the Premier League. I should be beating the drum 100% saying whoever wins a match play should be in. But you can't sit here for the last nine months telling me that, oh, it doesn't matter, the PDC will do this. 
I've never said that. I said, 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 Start writing stuff down on the sign and holding it up. <laughs> there, there's the sign. You need to write That's it down. That's my sign. Carney <laughs> oh. and me, everyone will turn off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, tune in. Uh, Any more questions, no, folks? <laughs> uh, I thought the final of the weekend was superb in the online darts. But I thought it was just a wicked finals night. Oh. <laughs> hasn't been there, hasn't been. <laughs> um, UK DA. What, what have we missed on the UK DA, Johnny? Nothing. We just did it. I mean, he must have, we must have missed something. I don't think so. We went through the pairs. Yeah, I don't know which won. teams won the event. I know Paula Jacqueline's lady side won. Oh, that's, oh, oh, actually, I didn't know this. If this is right, Johnny says, have you spoke about the UK DA letting non-qualified players play? Oh, I did hear about this. And I also heard that they changed the format at one point. Of, I think it was the ladies' event. No, they From changed the, the format. Group, they allow people. No, they changed the and format. And something came to men, and then it went stupid. Yeah, that's amateur. I'm big fans of what they've done and the marketing and everything, yeah. but to do that to fill holes, etc., is it, 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 it's fake names in the drawer all over again. Um, so, Jenny, is, is it been confirmed? They let, they let non-qualified players play at the weekend I think so if, if that's if that's correct it's just absolutely wrong shouldn't yeah. be allowed and whoever's done it should be kicked out yeah I love, I've and, been and big what? fans of what they've done I'm big fans of wow. the marketing and the professionalism that they've brought to the recreation yeah level game at county and national finals and, and just trying to do something different but it's not a good look for that and that they've been given a hall pass effectively as a new organization from those around it yeah. from some anyway from there's still some very vocal opposition there's still some people that would have you playing at green sands in the 1980s of ollie croft wandering around the room i think it's the best thing since sliced bread but there's a reason that BDO organization died a death and it was because it just did not evolve. And look, they've, they've done some good things. They've clearly now done some bad things. It's how they now respond to this. Um, Johnny. Yeah. Players who were there were let in because they asked if they could fill or fill the spaces for players and turn up. Yeah. Massively wrong on all levels. I, I was there on the Saturday. It was actually a really good buzz and an atmosphere in there. Yes. Look, there was a massive gaff when they, changed it from the top one to the top two, um, which annoyed a lot of people, and, and I get that. Um, so, yeah, look, they've done a lot of good things, but, yeah, that is absolutely wrong. And the funniest thing as well is Lincolnshire, their county shirts have got BDO badges on the sleeve. Can't make it up. Because they're still owned by them. They probably sponsored them. That's what the trophy's yeah, for. Good. It's for their in-house knockout. Honestly, I, I, I was in tears when I saw it. Um, yeah. Uh, right, last few then, because we're deep into Fergie time. 
Um, yeah, match play is going we'll, nowhere. Like, match play will never leave unless the Winter Gardens falls down. Will the world's move the to match a bigger venue? The less likely to move the Premier League than it is the match play to move. Um, the venue for the Worlds, if ticket demand gets huge, it will stay at Ali Pali, but they'll just move to the huge hall instead of the medium sized one they're in now. Yeah. It started in a small hall, didn't it? It's already moved to the next size up and whatever. They can just reconfigure that building. It yeah. won't move from there. Yeah, they, 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 can, they can just reconfigure it at, at Ali Pali. Um, so it would just be in the... Oh, CEC news. Yes, we'll do that quickly as well. We forgot about that. Um, two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, John. Love that. <laughs> um, so CDC event four was won by Jacob Taylor, beat Danny Baggish 7-6 in the final. So I'm just whizzing through Darts Connect now. Event 5 was won by David Cameron, beat Dennis Gates. Again, decent averages, both the 97 and 90, high 96s. Good game. And Event 6 was won by David Cameron, beat Matt Campbell in the final and again just just a quick one quick observation here for the cdc boys tournament averages of 84 83 and 83 that is very good very good very, indeed very good. yeah yeah continues to impress yeah um right folks absolute pleasure so sort I've of kept you entertained for the last two hours and 15 minutes. We've gone deep into Fergie time to fit it all in. Um, like we say, this is the last live lounge. The three of us are together until August because of holidays and, and everything um, like that. But the show will go on. As always, I'm a little disappointed that Boise's not going to take his phone, do it from around the pool, if I'm being honest. Show a little bit of commitment <laughs> levels. Um <laughs> But, no, um, so we will have some fillers, of course. Pro Tour streams coming up as well next week. We are in Hull Live League as well tomorrow, 9.30. Group A gets underway. Boys, I'm in Phil Bars, Jack Garwood, Lee Boys. Pleasure spending the last two and a bit hours with you. We've been online darts, and we'll see you all very, very soon. <laughs>